Coming up on the Met Report, the Division II National Player of the Year Award was given to a roadrunner for the first, second straight year. We investigate a mass poisoning of a prairie dog colony in Castle Rock. Students are celebrating domestic violence awareness with a colorful, colorful art display in the Tivoli. All this and more coming up on the Met Report. Welcome to this week's edition of the Met Report. I'm Josh Kozar. And I'm Melanie Townsend. Technical communication students from a social documentary class are producing a 20-minute multimedia documentary about whooping cranes, an endangered species native to North America. The class is tracking the bird's migration from Texas to Canada, and two of the students have already traveled to Nebraska to try and catch sight of the rare birds. The class has been working for four months on the project and plans to complete it in May. Just before spring break, MSU Denver received $14.8 million in funding for the new Aerospace Engineering Science Building. Now the Senate Joint Budget Committee has announced that the university will receive an increase in its fiscal budget for the 2015-2016 fiscal year. MSU will now have an additional 14.8% for its operating budget. Well, you may have noticed that in the Tivoli, a colorful new project is being displayed on the Auraria campus. Numerous students have decorated t-shirts to support the ending of interpersonal violence. Each shirt has been handmade by students themselves to voice their own opinions and feelings on the subject. The shirts will be displayed throughout the Tivoli for the month of April to support Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Students have the chance to make changes to Auraria campus during election week on April 13th. The Met reports Erica Lloyd gets the facts on a key ballot issue. Every day, thousands of students pass by the Auraria campus rec center, but one student and vice president of student government Morgan Sweeney thinks it's time to give the building a helping hand. Sweeney is proposing an opportunity that will separate the current campus rec fee from the student affairs fee. The rec center currently operates on a budget of about $600,025 a year, compared to the national average of $1.7 million. The money will go to extended hours, updated equipment, possible locker updates, expanded outdoor adventure programs, and the expansion of healthy pursuits. Morgan goes into detail about the bill's potential effects. If we can have you know, better equipment and extended hours to accommodate our students' busy schedules, if we can have bike share programs and you know, more opportunity for them to get out of the classroom and learn, whether it be within the facility or doing leadership programs with campus recreation, then in general you build that sense of community, that sense of engagement, um, retain students, get them to graduation sooner and with a higher GPA. If the bill passes through the Student Fee Review Board, then MSU Denver students can vote on the proposal in April. For the Met Report, Erica Lloyd. MSU Denver's economics professor Kishore Kulkarni is recognized for his willingness to speak out about economic policies and business endeavors that will affect students this year. Kulkarni will serve as a chairman on the Indiana Journal of Economics Business Fifth International Conference later this year. He also makes his debut on Channel 9 News discussing the possible decision that the Federal Reserve's interest rates will increase, which could become a good news, bad news situation for some. Nearly 300 faculty and staff members have contributed financial gifts that enable MSU Denver to better serve its students this year. In recognition of this generosity, President Stephen Jordan is hosting the annual faculty and staff donor reception on April 6th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. at Siggy's Cabaret in the Tivoli. For more information, contact Director of Stewardship Laura Hansen at 303-556-5140. Spring brings a lot of changes and with that new beginnings. Many students are looking to shed the winter pounds and spring into the healthier lifestyle. And the options in doing so are not limited here at Auraria. Starting today, several exercise classes and workshops are being held in the PE Center, such as gentle yoga, indoor cycling, meditation, a rich and 30 workout session, and Zumba. Fun Fit Fridays are also in effect, and this week is all about physical activity on the mat. Interested students can look up more information on the times and locations of the workshops on MSU Denver's website in the events calendar. Well, uh, as you know, Josh, probably, mm -hmm. Colorado is a very physically active state, and yeah. I have to say I've been uh, kind of slacking there. I think I might actually take up that the, I like class. the gentle yoga. 
All right? I, what was the difference between regular yoga? I know. If and it involves yoga. just laying there, then I'm totally going to take that class. I think you would be good at Zumba. I think I've Zumba, seen a I couple could dance, dance moves. And do the, yeah. Get it. I could do right. it. All we'll right. have to check that out. <laughs> Definitely. And, well, hopefully the temperatures will kind of get a little bit better. Yes. We've seen it kind of cold and weird these past couple it of days. It really has been. I know yesterday it started snowing. It continued through tonight. Mm -hmm. Now it's cold out and it was so warm. Uh, here's Christina. She's going to tell us a lot more. Thank you, guys. Let's have a look at our current conditions. Today, April 3rd, we have a low of 42. We have east southeast winds at 7 miles per hour with a high of 52. And now let's take a look at our hour by hour forecast. We're going to be at 44 degrees by 2 p.m., 48 degrees by 4 p.m., and we're going to reach a high of 50 degrees by 6 p.m. And now let's take a look at our Denver averages. We have a high of 61 degrees and a low of 34 for April. Our average snowfall is 6.8 inches, and we, have, we had a record high of 92 degrees in 1992. And now let's take a look at tomorrow's weather. For tomorrow, we're going to have a high of 68 degrees. It's going to be very sunny, so make sure that you get out. We're going to have east winds at 10 miles per hour with a low of 37. Coming up, I'm going to have our extended five-day forecast back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Christina. Well, it looks like we're going to get right back up there. I think this cold weather is going to be well out of the way. So yeah. maybe next week. Uh, you want to join me for a little spin class? Maybe. Outside. Sounds we can do good. It. All right, Easy. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up after the break. New details emerge in the German wings crash about the co-pilot's possible intentions. And coming up later in sports, our softball squad came into last weekend, second place in the Armac. Could they hold on? We'll be right back. Hey Roadrunners, my name is Mario Sinelli, Chief Editor of the Metropolitan, our school's weekly student-run newspaper, and this is what we do. Check us out for all the latest in Roadrunner sports, all the latest in entertainment and reviews, all the latest in MSU Denver news and other local happenings. And we're always looking for new writers, photographers, and copy editors. So if you're interested in being part of the staff, visit Tivoli Room 313 the Metropolitan is the student voice of MSU Denver. Let your voice be heard. Welcome back. Two weeks ago, as part of a development project, prairie dogs are no longer welcome in Castle Rock. John Madden's been investigating this story for us for a few days now. John, is this harmful to people? Yeah, people should definitely be concerned because it not only affected the prairie dogs, but it also affected other local wildlife as well. And as I found out, it harmed some people. I have to warn you, some of these images may be disturbing. 166 acres of land around the outlets of Castle Rock is currently undergoing a $177 million makeover called the Promenade Mall, which will bring about new restaurants, fitness centers, and retail stores to the area. 
Standing in the way of that plan, however, was one of the largest prairie dog colonies on the Front Range. I always had a particular concern for this colony here because it was so large. Deanna Meyer and her group of prairie dog advocates tried to relocate the colony. Despite PETA getting involved, holding town council meetings, and every single last remaining colony should be saved. Sending pleas to the landowners, Alberta Development Partners, and staging protests. Save the wildlife, stop the mall! Poison was eventually poured down their burrows and the colony was bulldozed over to the outrage of many. Shame on you! Despite the poisoning, some prairie dogs managed to survive and can still be seen roaming the construction site. However, it wasn't just prairie dogs that were affected by the poisoning. They continued last week to go through with poisoning them with fumatoxin. Fumatoxin causes the animal to bleed to death and can take up to 72 hours for them to die. Along with prairie dogs, dead birds and dying rabbits were also found at the scene. This bunny's been laying here convulsing. Even protesters said they got sick from the poison. We've had several people who have been in the hospital from it. On the warning label for fumatoxin, it states the poison can kill if inhaled. However, protesters around the area were not discouraged from being up close to the poison. Yes. Evil. Fumatoxin has even led to human fatalities in other cases after it was used to kill burrowing rodents. It's not the best ethical way of dealing with any prairie dog colony that's in danger from development. I reached out to the Castle Rock City Council and they had the following statement, quote, when it comes to wildlife and development, the town's authority is limited to protecting only federally listed threatened and endangered species as defined in the town code, end quote. I also reached out to the land developers, Alberta Development Partners. They did not return my emails or phone calls. The extermination company, Animal Pest Control Specialists Incorporated, also did not return my mm. phone calls. So if you go around the Castle Rock area, around the outlets, mm -hmm. there's a ton of construction going on. So the mall is being developed at this point. Wow. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Well, I've witnessed something similar firsthand uh, over by where I live. There used to be a lot of prairie dogs, and unfortunately, they are all gone because there's a new town center there and a whole bunch of shopping malls. It's, it's very unfortunate, and I, I really hope that we get this problem solved. Sad for the prairie dogs, and then even sadder, that's starting to affect people as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, John, for the update. All right. Appreciate it. Denver's mayor has added his name to the list of cities that will boycott Indiana. Michael Han My mayor Michael Hancock has told city employees they can't use the public funds to travel to Indiana. In the wake of Indiana's governor signing the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, mayors of several other cities have done the same. The end of law has created a national gay controversy. Gay and lesbian groups say they could face discrimination from the new law if business owners feel the religious freedoms are being violated. Indiana's governor says the bill does not allow discrimination and says he is working to clarify and quote, fix the law. New details emerge about the tragic crash of a German wings flight in the Alps last week. It is said that the plane's pilot had left the cabin to use the restroom. And when he had returned to the cabin, the door was locked from the inside. The co-pilot then dived the plane into the side of the Alps, killing himself and the other 150 people on board. It turned out that the co-pilot had been battling depression and refused to listen to his doctors, advising him not to work that day. It was just released that the co-pilot had been researching methods of suicide on his tablet several days prior to the crash. An investigation of his tablet also showed that the research security measures for the cockpit door, the airlines have condemned that the incident as an accident, an act of suicide, but are wondering if this was more than just suicide. A Colorado State representative is disciplined for a remark he made regarding the recent stabbing in Longmont. Following the attack of Michelle Wilkins and her unborn child, Colorado Spring Representative Gordon Klingenschmidt said on YouTube, quote, This is the curse of God upon America for our sin of not protecting innocent children in the womb. Many people denounced his statement and House Republicans have disciplined him. He will now be off of the Environment Insurance and House Health Committee. The Wilkins family has been given over $100,000 to help with the recovery, but they refused to take a $1,000 donation from Klingenschmidt. 
After an eight-year-long battle, the murder conviction of Amanda Knox has been overturned. In 2007, Knox was studying abroad in Italy when she was accused of stabbing to death her British roommate, Meredith Kircher. She spent almost four years in prison in Italy during the initial trial, until an appeal trial freed her in 2011 and she returned to the U.S. The Italian Supreme Court ordered the appeal trial to be reheard, and in 2014 she was found guilty and she was sentenced to 28 years in prison. Knox is now free and her trial is over, as drug dealer Rudy Gawede was sentenced to 16 years for death of Kircher after DNA evidence was discovered at the crime scene. Lilies will be a common gift this Easter Sunday, but if you have a family feline, you may want to find a different Easter decoration. It may come as a surprise, but all parts of lilies are extremely poisonous to cats, including the stem leaves, petals, stamens, and pollen. Even the slightest exposure can be fatal to felines, whether they chew on the lily leaves or just get pollen on their hair coat or whiskers. If you suspect that your cat has been in contact with these lilies this Easter, get them to your local vet as soon as possible. Cats who are treated within 18 hours of exposure normally recover. Well, a new tourist attraction comes to the beautiful city of Castle Rock, Colorado. On March 27th, Colorado welcomed the new 10-station zipline course for all thrill-seekers spending time in Colorado. The course gives the riders a unique bird's-eye view of Philip S. Miller Park and lasts for three hours crossing the Colorado Plains. Tickets range from about $90 to $100 a person, and participants must weigh from 70 to 250 pounds. Construction is still underway in order to make the surroundings more tourist and family friendly. An additional Head Rush Epic Tour Adventure will be added to the attraction this May. Next Saturday, April 11th, is the highly anticipated Breckenridge Spring Beer Festival. Volunteer spots are still available, and all volunteers receive even a t-shirt, general admission, and the chance to purchase a $15 tasting mug. The Met Report will follow up on this event in next week's show. However, if you would like to volunteer at this year's Bre Breck Beer Fest, please sign up at alwaysmountaintime.com. Josh, that definitely sounds like a cool event. A little, it certainly little beer does. Fest. I know my better half is uh, a bit of a beer connoisseur. Yeah, so I'm I sure him, like in that event. I'm sure he'll be up there probably <laughs> volunteering. Um, and also that new thing at Castle Rock. That I know, that awesome. seems I wanna, really I, cool. I want to zip line so bad. It's on my I, bucket list. I have been zip lining. It's really fun. So I, oh, really? I've okay. done it in the mountains. So it kind of be interesting to see what cool, unique things they do out yeah. in the kind of eastern part. In Castle Rock, yeah. yeah. It's a different location, but you know what? It looks fun. And I bet it'll be nice with uh, this week's weekend's weather, hopefully. Yes. Since the temperatures are going to be a little bit back up. But Fingers crossed. Exactly. Well, Christina, please give us an update on the national weather forecast. Thank you, joining, thank you for joining us for weather. Let's take a look at Saturday's local forecast. Denver, we have a high of 68 degrees with a low of 37. DIA is going to be 66. In Boulder, we have a high of 64 degrees, Grand Junction 71. And Lamar is going to be 73 degrees with a low of 35. Let's take a look at Sunday's forecast. Denver is going to be very gorgeous with a high of 75 degrees and a low of 44. DIA is 74 with a low of 42. Boulder is going to be 69 with a low of 41. Grand Junction 74 degrees. And Lamar tops us out at a whopping 83 degrees with a low of 47. And now for our national weather for Saturday. For Saturday, we see a low pressure system moving in from west coast. So we're going to have a couple of uh, cooler temperatures in the high country. And then, of course, in the Mississippi Plain, we're going to have still a couple of rain showers because of that low pressure system that's kind of trying to pass from the East Coast. And now let's take a look at Sunday's national forecast. We still have that pressure system moving in, the low pressure system from the West Coast. Denver is going to stay relatively dry. In Texas, there's a few, a few rain showers. And then, of course, that low pressure system is going to continue to move past the East Coast. And now for the five-day extended forecast. Monday, it's going to be 76 degrees. It's going to be a very gorgeous day. Wednesday is 58 with some rain showers and 68 degrees on Friday. Thank goodness you guys. We're finally going to have some rain for Wednesday and Thursday. I'm so happy about that. We need a little bit of moisture because California is a little dry. So 
Yeah. It's so weird how like some days in Colorado there's sun and the birds are singing and yeah. one day it's like <laughs> rain and snow. And Colorado likes to be a little active in. with its mm -hmm. weather. Mm -hmm. but. And I mean that's typical spring in Colorado. I mean you gotta have the snowstorms thrown in there and the rain showers. Well it should make it for a beautiful summer. So. It Absolutely. should. Well, April Absolutely. showers bring me flowers. <laughs> or snow showers. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch that remote. Because entertainment is next. MyMetMedia.com is a new interactive so website. Watch full newscasts from the Met Report. The Metropolitan have you covered. K Met Radio have everything you need 24 hours a day. El Noto Celo TV Met give you news in Spanish. How to advertise with us? Email sales at MetMedia.com. You're right, Mel. We were able to have a little fun with a few Auraria students, all in the spirit of April Fools. See what they did after we take a look at the release of a cool new streaming service created by rapper Jay-Z. The promo ad for title streaming features celebrities such as Madonna, Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Kanye West, Beyonce, and many more, talking about the importance of the advancements in sound and technology, creating a global platform for all artists to express themselves and share with one another. These artists have endorsed Tidal and believe that the quality streaming service offered will change the way we see, hear, and feel music. A step beyond YouTube, Vimeo, and Spotify. Tidal offers a 30-day trial, so make sure you don't pass up this awesome opportunity. And be sure not to pass up a trip to the theater as well. Groove and Music is not only found on Jay-Z's new music service, but it can also be found live and in the spotlight, right here in the Mile High. Based off of Motown's founder Barry Gordy's 1994 autobiography called To Be Loved, The Music, The Magic, The Memories of Motown, Motown the Musical is another theatrical masterpiece that showcases some of America's most influential and iconic artists such as Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross, and Michael Jackson. With over 40 American classics and favorites, ABC, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Brick House, I Heard It Through the Grapevine, and My Girl gets people moving and grooving to the classic sound of soul and funk of the 60s and 70s. Motown the Musical is now playing at the Buell Theater until April 19th and ticket prices start at $25. People were so excited and in such great spirits after seeing Motown, so it is no doubt an experience to be had. Watching people's reaction after watching a fantastic show is one thing, but watching reactions after being pranked is even better. Wednesday marked the first day of April, which also meant it was April Fool's Day, a day where people can get away with the old whoopee cushion gag or lottery ticket hoax. The Met Report takes it upon ourselves to try and see if we could fool some of our fellow classmates. Students at Metro were awarded scratch lottery tickets. They would have been pleased with their big winnings if today was an April Fool's Day. There's no way. There is no way. Is this like a trick scratch ticket? Ten thousand dollars. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just won a lot of money. Uh, no. It says that I won. I don't believe it. Five thousand. Is this real? <laughs> Did you just win? <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> no joke. No joke. Pay back my student loan. <laughs> That is so crazy! <laughs> yeah, 
I got five thousand dollars. <laughs> cool. Never really won anything in my life <laughs> till now. This is one of those trick cards. I'm like, whoa! No, it's April Fools. Are you guys playing? Oh, April Fools, huh? <laughs> Sent by mail or in person to the Money Ferry One Two Three Nowhere Drive in Make Believe Land. Today is April first, and I'm so happy that. <laughs> On this April first, I just won ten thousand dollars. I hate you guys. <laughs> oh, this is a joke, isn't it? Oh, look, valid only in your dreams. Oh, wow. <laughs> For the Met Report, I'm Addison Goodell. Well, you can't help but feel a little bad after these pranks, but I hope they know that it's all in good fun. And to make it up, we have two new movies in theaters that are without a doubt must sees. <laughs> Oh my gosh, did you see that? You gotta check it out. I wanna see that. That's so cool, I can't wait. We have to go and check that out. Let's see. Just when you didn't think it could get any better, huh? Here we go. If there's one thing we've learned, it's that people can't get enough of fast cars, hot girls, muscular guys, and action that leaves you gripping the seat. But in the epic new film of the Fast and Furious franchise, the cars are faster, the action is more intense, and the bad guys are even more cool. Jason Statham makes his long-awaited debut in Furious 7 as Deckard Shaw, the older and more vengeful brother of Owen Shaw. Out to avenge his brother's death, Shaw attacks the Toretto gang head-on for an epic battle of great proportions. The original cast, including Vin Diesel, Tyrese Gibson, Michelle Rodriguez, and The Rock will be back on the silver screen, including the late and great Paul Walker, who passed two years ago before the filming of Fast 7 ended. Make a Fast and Furious stats to a theater near you to see this next box office hit. Guess who's back? Once you step through this threshold, Stay. you'll be a part of one of the most feared and respected groups that there is. Check me out. Hello? Who the hell are you? I don't think they've ever seen a white person before. Trust me, that is not the problem. We can't all be as hard as Vin Diesel, Jason Statham, or Kevin Hart for that matter. Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart's new comedy, Get Hard, is bound to make even the toughest of homeboys crack up. Farrell plays the part of greedy and soft tycoon who is sentenced to time in San Quentin prison. It's up to his employee turned to newfound friend to help him learn how to survive behind bars, by any means necessary. Will their efforts be successful, or will Hart and Farrell land themselves in real hot water? Ow! What? Well, I'm excited to see Furious 7. I think it's going to be a really great tribute to Paul yeah, Walker. It's kind of sad, though. It I, is. Mean, I think that's all I would think about if I watched it. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm glad he got a chance to make this movie because now we can celebrate his life through it's this last girl. film. And then um, what do you think of uh, the lottery ticket little hoax that we I played? Thought, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. April Fool's is one of my favorite holidays-ish. Uh, <laughs> ish, yeah. If you're Hold not on the side of being yes, pranked on. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, don't go anywhere. We'll be right Right back. And the Road Runners, their third straight regional title. You love Road Runner sports, and so do we. From high flying Metro State action to in depth interviews with coaches, players, and staff. The Roadrunner Review is here to keep you up to date with everything that is Metro State Sports. Yeah, yeah, there we go! Check us out on Altitude Sports and Entertainment, Comcast CET, and at GoMetroState.com to follow your Roadrunners all season long. Roadrunners with our impressive comeback! So tune in and get rowdy.
Now joining us for Met Report Sports is Davey Burke. Despite a disappointing end of the basketball season, Metro State senior guard Mitch McCarron won a prestigious honor this week as McCarron was named the NABC Division II Player of the Year. McCarron wins the award after averaging 20.2 points per game. The Aussie also had six rebounds and four and a half assists per game. Not to mention the senior was an iron horse, playing just under 38 minutes of contest. McCarron is the third roadrunner to win the nation's top honor as he joins fellow Australian Mark Worthington, who won the award back in 2004-2005, and former teammate Brandon Jefferson, who won the award last year. This is the latest of a batch of awards McCarron has won this year. He was named RMAC Player of the Year last month, and just last week he was voted to the NABC All-Star Game. So a big congrats to Mitch for making all of us here at Metro State proud. Now switching courts over to the tennis ones now, where the men and women teams have a spotless outing against Hastings College as both teams shut out Hastings 9-0. All six men's singles won in straight sets, then the doubles duo of Nick Baker and Josh Gritz were dynamite, winning 8-1. The women also had a perfect outing as they swept Hastings both in singles and doubles. The men improved to 8-7 and seven on the year, while the women are now 3-9. and nine. Both teams are back in action today, right here at Auraria against Montana State Billings. Well, there's no place like home, and that has been true for Metro State Baseball, where they are 9-1. and one. The road, not so much, where they are 3-12. and 12. This week was a mini road trip for the team, as they took on Regis. It was a double header and a crazy one for these crosstown rivals. In game one, the Rangers got on the board first for a sack fly by Ty Oberbo, then a fielder's choice by Logan Knox, and it would be 2-0 Rangers. But Metro's turn at the plate, and Alex Walker says bada ping, he rips an RBI double to get Metro within one. For the second is where he just really left their mark, putting four runs on the board, including this two RBI hard knock by Knox once again, and Regis goes up 6-1. But the Birds battled back in the seventh with a five-run inning, which was headlined by some non-gold glove defense here by the Rangers. And Metro took advantage. Hunter Donaldson, next batter, delivers the game-tying RBI with this little blooper. And we are squared at six, heading into the last inning. Now into that inning, and Trent Maloney with the bases loaded, draws a walk. It's not sexy, but it is the game-winning one for Metro. And they win game one, seven, six, and get that rare road victory. Metro lost game two that day in walk-off fashion 3-2, but the Roadrunners got the win the next day 7-4, and they inch closer to a 500 record at 12-13, and, and the team looks to get above the winning surface as they take on New Mexico Highlands this weekend at home. The softball team, they're not having many problems winning, as the squad is in second place in the RMAC and just two games behind Regis for that top spot. This week, Metro tried to keep the winning going at home. Metro played two opponents this day. They lost to Game 1 to New Mexico Highlands. Game 2, they sent Cassidy Smith to the rubber to play Black Hills. Black Hills got up early as Erica Everson goes yard with this solo shot, and it's 1-0 Black Hills. But that's the only Yellow Jacket highlight as the Metro Bats lit the Black Hills pitching up like a Christmas tree. Amanda Tanny had an RBI, then Annika Anderson whacks an RBI in, and then Serena Espinosa, the toy cannon with some RBIs of her own, and BHS could not stop the onslaught as Metro scored so much, they called the mercy rule after five innings. Smith was super as usual, only giving up three hits and paying four, and the roadies win 10-1. Here's Espinoza on the squad's power showing. I think we had a lot more energy on the field and in the dugout, and we were all getting our stuff done, and we had a lot of big two-out hits and getting hits when we needed them um, with runners on. I think that was it. Um, for me personally, it was just trying to keep it simple, see the ball and hit it, you know, it was whatever's gonna happen. So the team won both games the next day against New Mexico Highlands and Black Hills, and they're on the road this weekend in Durango. So that's exciting. But what about Mitch McCarron, guys? How exciting is that? Yeah, congratulations to him. I wish him the best of luck. I know this is his senior year, right? Yeah. So this, he's going to be graduating and leaving. He, he so is. Do you know if he's going to get recruited by anybody? I know or? he's hoping to play in either Europe or his home, his home country of okay. Australia. And yeah, I know he's going to have a phenomenal career. I mean, watching him, it's, yeah, it's going to be a shame missing him shoot those threes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, great honor for him. And he's the second person to win the award. Yeah, correct? second in two years. Third, he joined fellow Australian Mark Worthington, who actually played in the Olympics a couple years ago for Team wow. Australia. So 
Big things for people who win that award. Yeah, great show. things coming out of MSU that is, Denver. That is so right. Definitely. Right. Well, thank you for watching this week's edition of the Met Report. For Christina Kleeman, Ashley Craven, Davey Burke, Josh Cozart, and the entire Met Report staff, I'm Melanie Townsend. And don't forget to check us out on mymetmedia.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at the Met Report. We'll see you on campus.